In the comments I receive, I'm often accused of being a supporter of China's terrible regime whenever I mention China and EVs. Truth is, I have no say in who we trade with, and there are some pretty disgusting regimes around the world that we do trade with on pretty much all the continents, Africa, Asia, South America. I can personally choose to try to boycott a specific country or region, but often that choice is taken away from me by the retailer I use. They make that decision for me. But I do try to separate the regime from the products I'm looking at, and nowhere is that so, as so important as with China. The EV industry began way, way before ours really took off. They do make some really cheap and nasty EVs that would never be allowed on our roads. But at the other end of the market, they're also more than a decade ahead of anything we're even thinking of doing. They've been there, done that, worn the t-shirt. Today, as people to ignore the hype, to reject their own utter hypocrisy, well, they're perfectly happy to buy iPhones made in China, whose batteries may well have used child slave labour in Africa, and they buy Dysons and Nike trainers, but then totally reject EVs on moral and ethical grounds. Oh, come on! Well, let's look at today's China and their largely unreported EV industries in robotaxis and buses. Robotaxis have been on the roads in China for a very long time. They did always have to have an emergency driver on board in the early days, ready to take over at a moment's notice in the case of an emergency. But even that has now largely gone. China is now issuing licenses to operate truly driverless taxis in its major cities. Now, I know San Francisco also has driverless cars, but they seem to be a bit behind the curve and only operate in very limited areas that have been geomapped in great detail in advance and only in very limited areas. And they're not hugely successful yet or liked. Well, Robo taxis are the future and Chinese, uh, China is ahead of the rest of the world. So why is this important? It threatens the very notion that the West was built on. Freedom. We have a freedom to go out and buy whatever car you choose. And you've got freedom to travel wherever your fancy takes you. But that freedom comes at a financial cost. In many cases, say daily commuting or flying off on holiday, your car is not only not ideal, it's a positive nuisance. Well, for work, we endure traffic jams. We sit there, holding the wheel, feet on the pedals, eyes on the road ahead. And then when we get there, we have to find and probably pay for a parking space, where your car will then sit for the next eight or ten hours unused. Then we drive it home and park, where it will probably sit for another eight or ten hours unused. The average car is only used around 20% of the time. All the rest, it is sat there, sometimes paying to be there, deteriorating and depreciating. Take the airport. You drive there, park the car, leave it sitting at great expense for 7 or 14 days, or you take a taxi and pay an even more extortionate amount to be dropped off and collected right outside the terminal. Robo-taxis overcome the absolutely massive snag with conventional taxis. You have to pay the driver to take you there, and his cost is the largest component by far of the fare that you pay. Well, think about it. A 20-mile journey probably only uses, what, about £3 in petrol or diesel? Another £5 maybe or so in wear and tear, insurance, car payments, etc. Proportionately, obviously, on the mileage. Yet a taxi between Heathrow and London city centre will cost you between £50 and £100, depending on the time of day. A robo-taxi could end up ridiculously cheap. Imagine that journey, no driver, being less than £20. Any time, day or night, doesn't make any difference to a robotaxi, there's no one in it. Would you then use it? Well, imagine commuting to work. At the moment, it does cost you over a pound a mile to cover the cost of motoring. That's covering fuel, insurance, servicing and wear and tear for an average motorist. So a 10-mile commute costs you £10. Plus, you then might have to pay a congestion charge, possibly plus a, a ULES charge, plus several pounds for parking... Now let's look at a robotaxi. It might charge you, charge you just £5. It'll pick you up at your door, go, go to work, drop you off right outside the door. Less than half price. 
Plus, don't have to worry about parking. It drives straight to the door. No ULOS charge. Drops you off and picks you up later. Would you use that if it was half price? Well, the answer is, after the initial total distrust, I'm not getting in any car with no driver, they will actually prove popular because they're cheap. So now ask yourself if you no longer use your own car for commuting or going on holiday, why would you pay to buy one for it to sit there now for about 90% of the time it's not being used? And when it does come up for replacement, am I really going to pay thousands or tens of thousands of pounds for a new car that I'm not really going to use? I suspect not. Robo taxis are on their way, and I will be making a special video looking at these in more detail shortly. Exactly the same argument applies to public transport. Here again, China is a million miles ahead of us. Way back about 10 years ago, rightly or wrongly, the government decided on a massive and bold plan to adopt EVs mainstream. They gave huge incentives to local manufacturers of batteries and EVs and big subsidies to the local buyers to buy them. It actually became so cheap that ice car sales collapsed, disappeared. But an even bigger transformation was taking place in public transport, mainly buses. Over 91% of all EV passenger vehicles, buses, in the world in 2021 were made and operated in China. They just dominate. They began way back in 2011 and have been accelerating away from us at a frightening pace ever since. One city now has its entire fleet, over 16,000, converted to electric buses. And the advantages are huge. First, much lower cost, as you don't need to pay a driver once they go autonomous. Their electricity at the national level is also far, far cheaper than petrol or diesel. They claim that buses use 73% less energy than diesel buses. That's huge. Then think, when an ice bus stops, it's burning fuel and producing pollution. An electric bus isn't doing either. And a bus does not spend all of its time moving. In fact, most of the time it isn't. So add contactless charging and bus charging becomes a thing of the past. If you put a charging pad in the road by every bus stop, that allows it to top up just a little bit en route, extending the range. And then have a designated parking spot with contactless charging back at the depot. That means they have more time available for charging than driving. And while they have drivers, they don't even need to plug it back in. They just need to park in a parking bay. Well, even in the UK, we're really into some electric buses. Just... Shenzhen City has 16,000 electric buses. Glasgow has 193. Well, give us time. It's all new to us. So the first stage is to go electric. Then it's only a very small jump to go driverless. Buses do travel always on preset routes. They are not random. This technology is already in use, quite widespread in China, where some buses even have their computer controlling the street traffic lights. EV buses approaching traffic lights, they always turn green, they always have the right of way. And slowly these buses are taking over. Well, why is China so far ahead? Well, I'm sure a lot of this is down to the government and their philosophy. You see, in Europe, we have a, well, a prove it's totally and completely safe with no downsides or hidden surprises. And we will look at them, maybe in time, even allow trials, carefully controlled and monitor, of course, and only after complete work and healthy and health and safety, risk analysis. Well, in America, it's a little bit easier. They seem to have a, OK, we'll let you try it if you can show us it's not actually going to kill more people or cause more accidents than the current system. We'll monitor it, and if it is, we'll stop you. But have a go. That's a much lower bar. In China... The president decided that the only way to meet his 2050 clean air commitments was to go all in with electric, just allow them free reign, offer the manufacturers huge financial incentives to go and have a try, doesn't matter if they failed, and offer huge subsidies to the customers to buy whatever they made. Which is right. I don't know. But I do realise we must choose 
2050 climate change agreements are in place and demand absolutely massive changes in the way we live. Whether or not you agree that climate change is man-made or even real is totally irrelevant. All the governments around the world are also seriously worried about air pollution. It is killing us really quite quickly. In the UK, the NHS calculates we have over 50,000 excess deaths each and every single year due entirely to the gases, chemicals, fumes and particles that come out the exhaust in the air we're already breathing. Much worse, obviously, in city centres. In addition, those gases, chemicals, fumes and particles are now proven to be actually doing serious damage to babies and youngsters, reducing their life expectancy and stunting brain development. Our exhaust products are killing us all, killing our kids even faster and condemning them to poor health and educational outcomes than we consider safe or acceptable. That is why I find the protests in the UK over the introduction of ULEDs uh, down in London recently absolutely appalling, even disgusting. These people are encouraging us to continue killing ourselves, killing our children and maiming and stunting their growth. Are they serious? I totally understand many simply cannot afford the alternatives and I sympathise. But are they actually happy to be killing and maiming their own kids? Is that what they protested about to continue doing? I don't understand that. Well, in China, their premature deaths from poor air quality, even way back in 2015, was calculated to be approaching 2 million. And the annual cost to their health service was absolutely astronomical, verging on unaffordable. China does have a massive lead on the West, or well, BYD for example, now almost a common name in the UK. They make around 15,000 buses a year. And yeah, they do have the problem with EV buses over there. All of them do. But don't forget, when the early petrol cars set off on the first London to Brighton rally, none were actually expected to arrive, and the results pretty much lived up to that expectation. Even today, they do not allow cars to go faster than 20 mile an hour average, and many still don't make it to the finish line. We are in for change, like it or not. Electric, electric vehicles are here to stay for the foreseeable future. And the adoption of driverless vehicles is well on its way. Even in the UK, maybe far sooner than you think. Well, thanks for watching right to the end. If you have liked this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. And those who would like to support us financially will find our Patreon details below. I'm Dave.